Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're going to talk about this, which is a dagger that Geoffrey Chaucer could have owned. I'm taking some liberties with that, but we're going to get that to that in a minute. This is a custom dagger made for the Todd's Workshop brand. And this is a production dagger made for the Todd Cutler brand. Two different brands, two websites. That's what it's all about. And the daggers that I'm going to be demonstrating with today are Todd's Workshop dagger, the Chaucer one, and the other ones are Todd Cutler daggers. Right at the beginning, I said that this was a dagger that Chaucer, Geoffrey Chaucer, could have worn and owned. And I also said that I've taken some liberties. So let me explain. So the artwork that it has been taken from is this picture here, which is held at uh, UC Berkeley Library, I believe, and is a portrait of Chaucer. Now you can see just around about here is a dagger worn on a baldric or a belt. The problem is, the resolution on that and the original artwork even when it was drawn just shows very very little detail and i have to interpret that for my client so this whole thing is about how do i get from a picture there which is just a few blobs into something like this dagger clearly i've taken some liberties i mean that's without a shadow of a doubt but there are some things that we do know and some things that we can interpret and guess from the artwork so the first thing we can see is that he's wearing it on his right hand side now Mostly at this period, dagger fighting manuals show a rondel dagger, and this is a rondel dagger, an early one, being used in the ice pick grip. So we know that it's probably edge upwards. Okay, so he pulls it out and he does that. Again, you can see that the dagger is just being worn at a slight angle. That means that it's probably a single point suspension. That gives you something much like the portraiture on the dagger. What it also means, you can't see it, but because it is a single point suspension, there's a good chance, and he's, you know, he's got money, Chaucer's got money, that it's quite a swanky dagger. So there's gonna be some metal fittings, some, something here which is nice. And then on the bottom here, there's gonna be some sort of a shape as well, because it works well. Now, 14th century on swords, often they didn't put shapes, but you know, daggers are slightly different. And if you've got a metal fitting at the top, you've probably got a complementary metal fitting at the bottom. Ronald daggers at this period could be incredibly long. And the English and the French particularly favoured very, very long daggers. But there was another style that was popular in England where they were quite short. And you even see them, because the blade is so short, it doesn't give you the leverage and the hilt is often quite heavy. You often see uh, rondel daggers worn and they're actually suspended upside down, which of course to us in a modern context is absolutely crazy because your knife can fall out. But hell, it's fashionable and that was so important in medieval Europe. So I've given this a sort of an intermediate blade because we don't know where it is. Again, the portraiture, I would say it's not one of the stupidly long English blades. So I've given it around about an 11 inch blade, 27 centimeter, something like that. Rondel daggers were usually single edged. So we've got a single edged blade here, you know, fairly stout. This is about 10 mil thick. And it's hollow ground because it would be a real chunk, it'd be a real tank of a weapon if it wasn't at that kind of blade thickness. So I've given it a little bit of hollow grinding there. These are all things that we have to interpret. So I don't know any of this for a fact, but these are things from around the subject matter, from the other daggers that are in existence, knowing a little bit about Chaucer, that he's got money and so on, that we can begin to interpret these things. Now, the other thing is, we don't know how old he is in this portrait. I'm gonna take a stab and say, he died in 1400, so I'm gonna take a stab and say 1380, right? Now, Rondel daggers really only began about mid 14th century, and they started with uh, a rondel disc at the front here and pretty much a regular kind of dagger pommel at the back. And as we got more towards the 1400, we end up with more classically shaped rondels, like these two Todd Cutler examples. Now these ones, this is very typically English. This is sort of French or English modeled a bit on one in the Wallace. And what that is notable about these is there's a style difference, but that has got a disc top and bottom, that's got a disc top and bottom. And by 1400, Rondel daggers had developed into that. But the other thing that's very noticeable on this one here is that we have uh, metal discs with an organic, a wood in this case, spacer between them. A very, very English thing. So we have done an organic disc in the middle there, wood, with a sheet bronze disc top and bottom. A little bit flouncy on the edge here, because again, he's got money. And the client wanted a sort of a nautical theme a little bit with the whole thing. So we've done a little bit of shell work on the scabbard, as you saw. And, and these are sort of like hinting towards uh, sort of being a clamshell type thing. Octagonal grip, quite English. And then this pommel here is not solid cast. 
it's hollow. It's done out of sheet. Very often, reproductions are made where you see it and you think, well, it looks uh, solid, so you make it solid. And then the whole thing is just like a club. It's not. This is actually a relatively light, relatively handy dagger, even though the blade is thick, even though you've got what looks like a lot of metal in the hilt. Now, if we look at that, I've done what's called pounced work. I've just punched into the bronze. That's all I've done is put it onto a log, shaped it a bit, put it onto a log, punched it in. And you get, you can see it there, that almost repoussé look of the flowing petals. Well, 14th century flowers were quite a thing. Look at the effigies on tombs. You see them all over the scabbards. And, and pouncing work is relatively straightforward. And they're on the inside. Are you going to get a focus? Yes. You can see that I've just crimped it around and again done that sort of shell little firework decoration there. And then we come to the button at the top here. Just a little bit prominent. Now again, if we go back to a portrait, you can see from the dagger, one of the very few details we can see is that it's got a little tang button on it. Now one of the other things that I would note actually, of course, is that the pommels on there and the guard look very much like it's in steel, not in bronze. But again, the client wanted bronze, so bronze we did but they could have done these daggers in steel or bronze, so it doesn't really make any difference. And then the last thing, just trying to skew my face again, so we focus on that, is there's like a mythical beast on the scabbard there, which is a, a sort of a wyvern, I think it's called. So it, it's kind of, I don't know, part eagle, part boar, part fish, uh, but either way, it's got fish in it, and we wanted something a bit nautical for this theme. And then we got, of course, the last thing that I didn't mention is that we've got the rope work de decoration just here and here on the hilt. And again, although it is rope work, it is, you know, a decoration that's seen everywhere, but ostensibly being rope, it's kind of like nautical themed as well. And that's really it. I suppose what this film is about is that part of my job is to interpret what the client wants and, and looking at a picture, even though it might be incredibly indistinct, but putting that together with what we know about the person who's wearing it, the portrait, the, the painting, the quality of it, the time period, the fashions that are around at the time, all of that, and we can begin to get together with putting a knife that might plausibly have existed for this person. And that's where we're at. So we've got Geoffrey Chaucer there, who is wearing a, a dagger that you can make almost nothing out of, and we end up with that. Is it correct? Well, clearly, I can't ever say that it is correct. Is it plausibly a dagger that Chaucer could have worn? Yes, it is. And that's really what the brief was. Thank you very much. Okay.